iOS 15 was released and it brings a lot of new features to the iPhones, including share play and portrait mode for FaceTime, a new mode called Focus, and a lot more. So in today's video, I'm going to share the biggest new features of iOS 15. But before we get started, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this type of videos and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. This video is sponsored by Setapp, an incredible cross-platform suite which gives you access to over 200 iOS and macOS applications without any additional cost. You only need to pay for your subscription and choose the apps that you would like to use. Now, a great benefit is that you can start a 7-day trial for free when you use the link listed down below in the description. So starting off, let's talk about FaceTime. There is a new feature called SharePlay that will allow users to share their screen. So you can watch series, you can listen to music, or actually share your screen with your friends. I believe this is gonna be extremely convenient because if I'm helping someone, for example, to change settings on their iPhone, I can simply show on my screen where to go where to press and things like that. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. Unfortunately, this feature is not available exactly at this moment, but it will be available in a new iOS 15 update. And still talking about FaceTime, spatial audio is now available. There's also a grid view, so if you are in a big call, you're gonna see everybody at the same time, and then whoever speaking is going to pop up bigger. There's also portrait mode, and I believe many of you are excited for that because if we are FaceTiming someone and our background is messy, we can just use portrait mode, which is great. Then there's also FaceTime links, so now you can schedule calls and share calls with your friends. And something great about it is that this is not limited to iOS. So if you're inviting a friend that has Android, for example, this friend can join the call through a link. And talking about the Messages app, we now have a new feature called Shared With You. So if your friends share links, photos, or anything with you through the Messages app, you will have a new kind of like a folder called shared with you in the correspondent app. So if you go to the photos app, for example, you will have a new folder there called shared with you with the photos shared through the messages app. And it's going to say shared by Pedro, shared by Lillian. It's gonna have to, um, at the bottom who shared that photo with you. And talking about Memojis, we have now new expressions and you now have the ability to dress up your Memoji. So you have different outfits to choose from. So if we look here, this is my Memoji. And if we go to clothing, we have all of these options to choose from. So let's see, let's choose something for me to wear. Um, Let's look at this one. I'm gonna wear a turtleneck. I use I wear a lot of turtlenecks and let's choose a different color. I like this color. Oh, and you have second option, a second option, and then a third option. Okay, so I chose a red turtleneck, but as you can see, you now have a lot more options to customize your Memoji. Now, focus mode. Um, I believe that many of you are excited for this feature, and if you're not really sure what focus mode is, you can kind of think of um, a, a personalized do not disturb. So you can create different focus modes for different things that you may be doing. So for example, if you are working, you can create a working focus um, and allow only people from your job and notifications related to your job to send you notifications. So you will only receive notifications for those apps and those contacts. Same thing for studying let's say you're studying you can allow notifications only from your contacts that you study with or applications that you use to study so you can personalize everything pretty much so if we swipe down here and go to the control center you will see that i have do not disturb on right now but if i press here you'll see that there are 
other options. So I have work, sleep, fitness, life, and personal. So the live is the one that I created for my live streams. I do live streams on my Brazilian channel every morning. So from 8 to 9 a.m., I don't receive any notifications. But let's create one together right now. You can simply press on new focus right here. And then as you can see, there are a few options here, custom driving, gaming, mindfulness, and reading. So I'm gonna create a custom one. We're, we can choose a name. So let's say working. I know that there's already a working there, but let's put working too. I'm gonna choose a color. Then you can choose the icon this one and press next here you can choose the people you want notifications from when this focus is on so if i'm working i will allow my husband to send me notifications because he works with me so i'm gonna put pedro press done and there you go he is right here then you can allow calls from your favorites or no one, everyone, and all contacts. I'm gonna leave it like this for now. Press allow. Then you can choose which applications can send you notifications. I'm going to add Notion here. Just as an example. And I'll press allow again. So as you can see, it's saying that it's on everywhere. So for example, if you turn this focus on your iPhone and you have a Mac and an iPad, it will also turn on on your MacBook and your iPad. So this is extremely convenient. Also, you can turn it on or off through the control center and choose your home screen. So you can also limit distractions and you can limit which home screens you have access to depending on which focus you have enabled or not. So it's extremely convenient. I really love this feature and I will definitely play a lot more with it. Now, notifications are also redesigned on iOS 15 and you have contact photos and larger app icons. So it's easier to identify your notifications. And there's also something called notification summary. So your iPhone is going to group your notifications um, into the most important ones towards the top of the page and the least important ones towards the bottom. And talking about the Maps application, there are new driving features, immersive walking instructions, new transit features, but the most exciting part is that, is that you can now explore cities with a lot more detail. So if we open the Maps app, for example, and we, let's say we go to San Francisco, we can zoom in Choose the 3D option and look at this golden bridge. There's definitely a lot more detail compared to what it was before. Apple is updating cities all the time. So of course, San Francisco is one of the most advanced ones, but I can't wait to have more information for more cities and more countries. Now. Safari. I believe that this is one of the apps that you will notice the biggest difference because now the search bar moved to the bottom of the page. So as you can see here, the tab bar is towards the bottom, which I know it can be kind of weird at first, but I really like the way it looks. Also, it's a lot smoother than it was. So if you start scrolling, for example, can you see that a tab bar disappears? I think this is a lot better than it was. And there's also a new gesture that you can use. So if you swipe left or right, you can simply switch and go to the other open tabs. I think this is a lot better than it used to be. And you also have the ability to create tab groups. So let's say you're doing a research about the iPhone 13 and you want to add all of the websites that you're reading from to this tab group. You can simply choose which 
website you want to add. So let's say I want to add this page from Apple's website. You press and hold on this icon right here towards, towards the bottom of the display and press on move to tab group. I already have one called iPhone 13, so I can simply tap here. But if you don't have the group yet, you can simply press on new tab group. So I'm just gonna add it to iPhone 13 and that's it. It's super easy. And if you like to organize everything that you're searching for on Safari, this is now a new way to do it. Now the wallet app also has new features. You can now add ID cards. So if you are in the one of the states that allow your ID card to be added to the wallet app, you will now have the option to do that. And you can now add your keys. So now your iPhone can unlock your home, your garage, your hotel room, and even your workspace. So if you have the ability to test any of these features, it is now available on iOS 15. And moving on to a new feature related to the camera app is a feature called live text. I like this feature a lot. I used to have an application that did the same thing. Now it's built in um, my iPhone, which is great. So live text pretty much allows you to point your iPhone's camera to something that has text on. So let's say a billboard, or if you're at a classroom and your professor is writing a lot of things on the board, you can simply take a picture of the board and copy and paste the text. Actually, you do not even need to take the picture. I'm gonna show it to you right now. Okay, so here I have a screen protector and we're gonna see how well this feature is going to work. So the only thing I need to do is open the camera app and point it to whatever I'm trying to copy the text from. So do you see that there's an icon that shows up right here towards the right? Simply press on this icon and let's see. So this is kind of complicated so it only recognize a part of it but let's select all and copy and i'm gonna go to the notes app and i'm gonna paste the text that it recognized and we're gonna see how well this worked so it says hold the screen protectors edges and carefully align it with your device this is correct once the screen protector is in place, lightly press the center of the screen protector and then gently slide your finger across the screen, allowing the screen protector to adhere itself to the phone. Everything is right. So, like I said, there are a lot of different uses for this. You do not want to copy and paste information on a screen protector, which is okay. But again, if you're trying to copy a phone number from a billboard, or if you are in a classroom, like I said earlier, I feel like this is extremely convenient. Besides that, iOS 15 has a lot of other features like the visual lookup. Spotlight has a lot more results whenever you search for something. It shows you results in more details. The Photos app also has um, interactive memories. The Health application um, also has new ways for you to share your data with your friends or family members or even your doctor. And of course, iOS 15 also provides more privacy for iPhone users. And these are the main new features on iOS 15. Let me know down below in the comments what's your favorite one. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.